On the 17th of July, Turkey's President Recep Tayyip Erdogan paid a visit to Saudi Arabia. He met Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman in Jeddah. This was Erdogan's first stop of a three-nation Gulf tour. After completing his Jeddah stint, Erdogan then went to Qatar followed by the United Arab Emirates. However, his trip to the Saudi Kingdom was the most crucial stop. This is because Saudi Arabia signed a major defense deal with Turkey. Riyadh signed two drone acquisition contracts. Details of these contracts have not been fully disclosed. Both nations, though, have confirmed the deal. This includes the purchase of Turkey's Bekar Beraktar Akinje drone. Haluk Beraktar, the CEO of Turkey's drone making Bekar firm, said the deal with the Saudis is going to be the biggest defense and aviation export contract in Turkey's history. Clearly, the Saudis are willing to pay a hefty amount for the drones. And there is a growing global demand for Turkey's drones. This was evident after 28 nations placed orders for Turkey's first drone export, the Bayraktar TB2. The TB2 has been active since 2014. It has been a highly reliable drone on the battlefield. Now, after its success, nations are eyeing Turkey's second drone, the Akinje. Akinje means raider in Turkish. It is a high-altitude, long-endurance, unmanned combat aerial vehicle. The drone is powered by two turboprop engines and can carry over one ton of payload. The drone is equipped with a homegrown, active electronically scanned array, known as the ASA radar. These radars are some of the most high-tech military equipment. Their purpose is to locate targets that emit signal frequencies across a wide range. These radars allow the aircraft to track aerial and ground targets simultaneously. Apart from this, the Akinje is also capable of electronic warfare. It can also gather signal intelligence, launch cruise missiles, precision munitions, and Baykar Defense is working on giving the drone air-to-air -air capabilities. The Akinje is already in use by Turkey's forces. Ankara inducted the drone back in 2021, just two years after its first trials began. Turkey has deployed the Akinje in various operations, missions that it considers as counter-terrorism measures. And the drone has delivered to its full potential. The Akinje also has international operators. Pakistan has purchased the drone. The first batch was delivered in April. Islamabad is getting an unspecified number of the Akinje drone. The debt-ridden nation has paid $7 billion for them. Turkey's drones are popular in Africa too. North Africa, to be precise, Libya operates the Akinje. They placed an order for the Baykar drones in 2022. Reports say Libya will buy up to 70 of these drones. And now Saudi Arabia will become the fourth nation to operate them. So what makes the Akinje special? The attack drone has nine hard points, eight on the wings and one on the underbelly. The drone can launch guided anti-tank missiles, guided and unguided rockets, and laser-guided smart munitions. It has an operational altitude of almost 30,000 feet, an operational range of almost 5,000 kilometers, and a cruise speed of 280 kilometers per hour. All while staying airborne for up to 25 hours. To supplement all this, the drone also has a specialized electronic warfare pod. Turkey is now working on mating the SOM missile with Akinje. The missile is being made by Turkey's Roketsan firm. The SOM is a stealthy, high-precision air-launched cruise missile. It can hit targets up to 275 kilometers away. This will allow the Akinje to deliver lethal blows while being away from enemy air defenses. All of this makes the drone a value deal. But the cost of the Akinje drone is still a mystery. Baykar Defense has not disclosed the cost per unit. Analysts say that it is at least 25% cheaper than American and Chinese drones. So how does the Akinje fare against its competitors? Akinje's primary competition is the American MQ-9 Reaper and China's Wing Lung 2. Both the American and Chinese drones are powered by one turboprop engine. Turkey's Akinje gets two. 
the American Reaper can carry the highest payload, almost 1.5 tons. That's slightly more than the Akinjay. And the Chinese Wing Lung II stands last, with a payload capacity of just half a ton. The Akinjay can operate from higher altitudes. It also has the highest operational range of almost 5,000 kilometers. But it loses out in endurance. The Akinje can fly non-stop for 25 hours, two hours less than the Reaper, and five hours less than the Wing Lung II. According to expert estimates, the Akinje is far cheaper than the American Reaper, by at least four to five times. Clearly, the Akinje is a great bargain. It may not be heavily combat tested like the MQ-9, but international buyers will prefer the Akinje it's easy on the pocket and gets the job done. But the Akinje sails have a hidden booster, which comes from a battle-tested Baykar drone, the Bayraktar TB2. The TB2 is like a younger sibling to the Akinje. It is a medium-altitude, long-endurance drone. The drone is powered by one turboprop engine. It can fly at altitudes of up to 18,000 feet. The machine has four hard points, it's capable of launching guided anti-tank missiles and laser-guided bombs. The drone can stay airborne for almost 27 hours, but it can't match the technology offered by the Akinje. The TB2 does not have an ASAR radar or any electronic warfare capabilities, yet it has performed effectively. The drone is highly reliable. It has flown for over 400,000 hours across all its operators, which is why nations prefer the drone for its reliability and low cost. The TB2 drone captured the global spotlight in recent years. It first got recognition during the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict in 2020. Azerbaijan used the TB2 to target Armenia's ground forces. The drone operated with impunity and delivered with precision. The TB2 gained international attention again last year. This time, it was in Ukraine. In the early weeks of the war, Ukraine operated the TB2 drone with a high success rate. The drone hit Russian troops, tanks and artillery. It took out targets that were camouflaged or tucked in trenches. Russia had no answer for the drone. However, things changed as the war dragged on. Russian troops no longer fell prey to the TB2. They found effective and cheap measures to shoot it down. The TB2 has been unable to get any tactical achievements since then. But that doesn't bother Turkey. Baykar Defense is upgrading. They're coming up with new drones, and these aircraft are going to be Turkey's air power backbone. Baykar is working on a new drone, the Bayraktar Kizilelma. It'll be Turkey's first stealth drone and will be capable of performing combat roles. The drone can be tasked to give cover to other drones or act as the wingman to pilots. But the Kizilelma is still in production. It flew its first flight in December last year and Turkey wants to induct the stealth drone by 2025. They are pinning their hopes on the Kizilelma. It'll be their first drone which will be powered by a single turbofan jet engine. Because of its stealth, the Kizilelma will not be easy to detect on radar. This would give it the element of surprise, lowering the chances of the drone getting shot, but that doesn't mean it'll be invincible. Losses are common in war zones. Machines can be made to adapt to the demands of the battlefield. Cheap, reliable machines like Turkey's drones can do this well. This is why they are in high demand. The TB2 drone is competitively priced. It costs just $5 million per unit, which is why the drone is highly sought after. The TB2 has been purchased by at least 28 countries. It is likely to secure even more deals. So will the Akinje. It seems like a sensible purchase over pricey American and unreliable Chinese drones, and Turkey offers them at a bargain without too many clauses. Washington DC is too selective in selling its drones. It's one of the few countries that picks its customers. On the other hand, Beijing rarely sells its weapons without additional hidden costs, which are mostly economic pacts related to the debt-creating Belt and Road Initiative. In comparison, Ankara wants to use military sales to boost its slow economy. These defense deals come at a crucial time for Turkey. The Turkish lira is at an all-time low. 
The country is facing inflation of almost 38 percent. Naturally, Turkey needs the funds. It can't be picky about its customers. The deal with Saudi Arabia is an example of that. Turkey and Saudi Arabia were on a rocky road. They were competing for influence in the West Asian region. The killing of Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi in Istanbul back in 2018 worsened ties further. But things are changing. Saudi Arabia wants weapons and Turkey wants the money. Ankara will sell its weapons to customers without too many terms and conditions as long as there's a steady inflow of cash. And that is exactly what Erdogan is doing.